God. And I looked into his uh, testimony and he claims that, you know, he kept on resisting the call to go up front and accept Jesus. And his chair started shaking and he claims that it actually started moving itself, like picking him up and like hopping down flights of stairs so that he actually went up front and that he still resisted the call to um, to accept Jesus and all these things happen. And so like four supernatural signs, he claims at later, he then um, accepts Jesus and he submits and does all this stuff. And... Um, so that's uh, that's his claim to fame, so to speak, his conversion story. So he kind of setting himself up as somebody special, unique. He asked Christians to pray and fast in order to self-atone for their day-to-day -day sins, saying that only the original sin was atoned for by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyway, the following are 10 prophecies that we should test according to 1 John 4.1. If they will all come to pass, they should give him credibility that he needs to firmly recognize today's prophet of God. However, should any of them fail, we should all come to realization that he is a false prophet who is not to be revered. So today is October 3rd when the article is written with barely five days to go before the alleged final dispensation. So what are these prophecies? The new level of the demonstration of signs and wonders in the church. Now remember, this was 2011 when this was said. Uh, so all members of the church will be a miracle worker. So that in inherently says that if you're not a miracle worker, you're not a member of the one true church. Not just the pastor, not just the leaders are in mind here. He meant that everyone in the body, yes, including you, he said, not just the pastor, not just the evangelist, not just the apostle, not just the teacher, not just the prophet that God is going to use mightily, but every common believer. Number two, angelic activity will be commonplace. He says that you will be seeing angels after October 8th and you will be receiving messages from them, which is a little bit scary. If indeed that has been happening, I would question the messages. Are they submitted to the word of God? Probably not because I have a feeling this guy's in connection with some other types of angels. Number three, your church will be glorious. He says that even without the preaching of the word, as soon as people come within the atmosphere of your church, they're going to drop and fall to their knees, put up their hands and cry to the saved. Try to be saved. That's not happening. And it hasn't been happening. Anyway, um, number four, there will be a great increase in revelational knowledge of God and the things of God. And he said, and it is based on Revelation 10, 7, when the seventh angel blows the trumpet, then the mysteries of God will be known to the world. Should this thing happen, we should rejoice because we may have already skipped the six other trumpets. See Revelation 8, 2 and following. Number five, you will see the spiritual realm. Again, not just the pastors or the leaders of the church. You will see this, who will see the spiritual realm with your, own, your eyes too. After your 10-day fast, expect to see the spiritual realm unfold before your very eyes, Before, but you must believe it. Otherwise, you won't see it. Wow. The emperor's new clothes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone will become prophets. He based this on Joel 2, 28 and 29, where it says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, meaning the kids, even before the age of purity and those above and beyond. He said it did not happen during the time of Peter. This time all flesh means everyone, including the unbelievers. We shall see. Your life is going to change. Number seven, he meant to include your destiny, your future, and your entire purpose is going to change, hopefully for the better. Number eight, you will even see the Lord Jesus standing beside you. I don't know for sure if I think I think it will happen before the rapture of 1 Thessalonians 4.17 or before the gathering of the elect by the angels, Matthew 24.31, or before the man of sin is made known, 2 Thessalonians 2.3. We shall soon find out. Number nine, expect every common person will say, we saw the Lord. My only concern is if we can still apply the warning of the Lord in Matthew 24.23 when this becomes prevalent. Number 10, lastly, expect to skip the part in Acts 11 where the angel told the disciples, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. That being the case, we shall probably skip the parousia when every eye sees Jesus coming from clouds of heaven with power and glory, because this time every eye will probably see Jesus beside them already.